This is my first generation FT817, which I bought as soon as the 817 came out. I guess that was about 20 years ago. This was before they even added the uh, 60 meter band or 60 meter channels, I should say, to it. I say channels versus band because it, you know. You know, we don't have the full band, we just have five channels, as everybody knows. But, regardless, uh, I did do the, uh, I, I opened up the transmit on it so that I can transmit on 60 meters. But uh, the second generation added 60 meters by default, on the U.S. version anyway. So this one is uh, before they did that before we even had 60 meters available to us in fact but uh, I really like it I've always liked it and enjoyed operating with it and everything it gives me a lot of flexibility I think everybody's pretty much familiar with what it does but it's full HF 160 meters through 10 meters plus 6 meters 2 meters and 70 centimeters all modes and uh, you know that's a lot of flexibility in a small package and it was quite revolutionary when it first came out and uh, it's still kind of uncommon to to have that much in a small package like this one of the things I've never liked about it though is the power connector it's got this tiny little Oh, tiny little connector and uh, it's pretty flimsy and not only is it flimsy but it it also has a tendency there's a trace on the board inside here that uh, tends to burn out easily and I mean it's there for protection but uh, it's apparently easy to uh, to short it out while you're connecting it to power and uh, burn that trace off the board and that happened I don't know when it happened but I did notice that I was using it one time and uh, and it just started fading and what it was is it had a uh, I had a set of um, alkaline cells in it and it was running off that even though I had it plugged in and I thought it was running off what I had plugged into the back of it but it wasn't it was running off the alkalines and when they died it died so apparently I burned that trace off so what I did you know you can go in there and re repair the trace but I decided not to because it's a lot of trouble and you know in reading about it it seems to be kind of kind of tedious to do that and all that just to regain this and I always kind of wanted to remove that and just hardwire into it and have a a better connector dangling out here oh just to make it more robust but when that trace burned off the board what I did instead was go in here and just connect a wire in here to where the the battery uh, battery tray goes and I put a cigarette lighter adapter on the end of that wire so I can plug that in in the car or whatever and uh, good to go what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to do something entirely different because I don't want to be confined to you know that's a pretty big connector for the little bit of current that this thing draws so I have got a battery holder that uh, that holds three 18500 lithium ions for fully discharged it should be 11.1 .1 volts I think actually if it's fully discharged it should be like 9.6 but uh, 
fully charged it should be about 12 anyway that's all that is within the range of what this can handle and I already had some of these ultra fire 18650 cells 3 amp hours and uh, this is a series pack so you know that should work well and uh, I've actually heard of people putting these internally in in the battery tray but I don't know if they used 18500s or if they used I mean 18650s or if they used 14500s which are double A size but what I've read about that though is I know these are they're they're pretty fragile and uh, you know if they get scratched or whatever if if that outside surface gets scratched it can short on the inside of the battery and then explode and destroy the uh, I mean on the inside of the radio explode and destroy the radio and that would be a bad thing so I'm just gonna go with this and and have it er external to it and that way I can just I can have another set of these on charge and swap them out whenever I want to and I think that will work great this does have a a built-in charger for knock heads or nickel metal hydrides originally for knock heads but they they kind of work for nickel metal hydrides too but it's a dumb charger and uh, it's never really been all that great so it's really not a disadvantage not too much of a disadvantage to have this kind of you know outside in fact I might even glue it onto the battery door here glue it or screw it or whatever this has some some screw holes so I could just put find some uh, little Phillips head screws pan head that will uh, that will fit down flush so it doesn't scratch the cells and uh, screw it to that to the battery door that will work well I'll probably need to cover it with something so the batteries don't get scratched but uh, but that will work pretty well because it would uh, it would kind of angle you know it would act as feet to angle the radio up for operating that would be great but anyway as I was getting that you know the, the internal charger relies on this circuit still being here number one and number two it's not a very good charger anyway so I'm not really losing anything by dumping that and uh, charging externally so what I'm going to do is uh, I mean this worked fine but I'm going to go ahead and cut it off and put this in its place so that's the project for today okay the way I had it before was I had the uh, wire from the the lighter adapter soldered into the uh, the original double A battery pack and I guess my thinking was that uh, I could always if I really needed to I could use some double A alkalines in it but uh, I decided to get rid of that setup cut the wire off the uh, the double A pack and solder it to the 18650 pack drill a hole in the battery door and run it through and uh, haven't done it yet but what I what I plan to do is um, either glue or screw it to the battery door so it's on the outside so let's try this and see how it works So it plugs in this way, or this way, this way. Hopefully we don't let the smoke out of anything.
just making sure the wiring looks correct on this pack because I'm sure it's made in China just as the cells are okay here we go here goes nothing all right so let's see if it powers up it does indeed Okay, as it turns out, one of those cells was com a complete dud. So, I charged another one and stuck it in there. And it's working now. I've got my uh, portable 40 meter antenna on it, AC7H Maldol. And uh, it's certainly not perfect because I'm standing inside here. And I can't even stand the thing upright with the antenna extended but let's just take a listen anyway see what we can do but as you can see it powers up now next step will be to try to transmit with it but uh, we're not going to do that right now
Anyway, we can hear a little bit. Even with this same antenna outside and with a ground wire connected to it, it would sound a lot better. It would be a lot stronger signal, but uh, but you can see that it works. And uh, I'll be testing that soon on transmit and make sure it holds up there. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.